Hello, dear ones. It's Alice. I'm of the stars. And I have a, a very interesting story to tell you um, about a special case of ego uh, and how ego interacts with the world. But before I do that, I need to go over a story that I told some years ago uh, regarding a different kind of ego interaction with the world where because of early childhood loss um, uh, and a very traumatic event that happens in early childhood, a person uh, turns to a type of ego patterning where their ego they feel is the only actual ego in the world and all other um, purported people in the world are just like pieces on his chessboard, not real people, okay? And so then you, after you hear this, this earlier story, you'll have a good basis for comparing it to the new story that I'm going to tell you in another uh, video. So, so here is the old story coming up. The, what it results in, uh, just to let you know, is uh, antisocial personality what they call psychologically antisocial personality. Um, and they, I guess they call it that because the way that the ego is like viewed, the world view of the person who has this notion of ego results in behaviors that are uh, in very much contrast to the way that most people relate to other people. So here goes. This is a story about a young person who lived with his family in a very rural, remote area uh, in his early childhood. And his father had gone off someplace. And uh, he was home then with his mother. He was maybe four or five years old, home with his mother and a new infant that she had. And uh, so. Uh, he wanted to climb in bed with his mother. He had a sexual feeling. And she, she pushed him out of the bed. And he became angry and he went and set fire to the house out in this rural area. And the house burned down and everybody died. So, um, so then the, he found the mother's body that was charred up and, and he, was, he was all alone in the middle of nowhere and hungry and he tried a tiny taste of the mom. And that led to a life in which he believed that he was the only ego anywhere. He had like a, a setback. Um, you know, at the age of two, uh, children begin to learn I, 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 no, I will not, I am, you know, different from mom. And so then this young person, unfortunately, was about four years old and the shock of what happened to him, seemingly his own fault, right? The shock of what happened to him was so great that it set him back to that, before that marker where we learn the ego is different from the ego of the mother. And so he became, because he knew his mother was dead, he became the only ego anywhere. And for him, everyone else that he saw was just a part of his own ego that like pieces uh, on a chessboard and he was the only player and so in his life he felt he had the perfect right to move these pieces around anywhere he wanted and that they had themselves no free will and this attitude that he had which was very unusual from the standpoint of ego um, uh, allowed him to express his worldview by mind controlling and hypnotizing everyone else that he that he had met. And so that's one very unusual way of expressing ego in uh, the world of duality in the third and fourth dimensions. And I just uh, say that by way of a flashback to what's been talked about previously about early childhood loss. The, I think there were a few blogs like that. So, um, and how it changes our concept of who we are, our, of what our ego is, and what the world is, and what all the humans in the world are, really are. How unusual that point of view is. So from that point of view, um, a person, 
could, could easily uh, turns to antisocial behavior because it doesn't make any difference from their point of view what happens to other people as long as they derive pleasure from what happens. Do you see pleasure or comfort or um, like a sense of being loved? It doesn't matter whether those people live or die at all. And, um, and also because the, that very young person sampled a piece of the mom's body at a time when he experienced loss and derived comfort or sustenance from that, he came to feel that women existed uh, to provide him with nourishment uh, like meat. So he became a cannibal, a cannibal of women. Uh, and um, and um, in that way he transformed the notion of mother's milk, which is the typical way of conceiving, receiving sustenance from the mother, into the notion of sacrificing the mother, drinking her blood and eating her flesh, which is a very unconventional way of, of viewing the mother-child relationship. Again, it involves um, it involves um, feeling that the person that is in the motherly relationship with with the antisocial personality, what they call that that person is an expendable chess piece on the antisocial personality's game board of life. Okay, so so that person may have numberless. Um, substitute mother figures throughout their life, typically in relationship, feeling that they are wives to him, that he then eventually sacrifices in the same way that the sacrifice of his mother occurred. And this is a form of like, um, you know, what you would call blood sacrifice, something like the notion of the Catholic Church of sacrificing Christ's body and blood for transformation of the person. Only uh, the Church... Um, the church uses a substitute, something substitute, uh, something very nourishing for that. And, and it's their way of saying that cannibalism is not the way to go. There were times in the, in the um, history of hum humankind when blood sacrifice was, tr was used, say the Aztec times, to, to, to create in the people a notion that that they would receive nourishment from the growing maize and so forth, the, the growing crops through blood sacrifice. Uh, in a way that's, that's true, but the more uh, socially acceptable current day usage of the notion of, of sacrifice is for the mother to give the child milk or to give the child food, place food on the table every day. And that is, that is the way that most people look at it. This, what this person, what we call cannibalism today, this person is, was th uh, thrown back to the ancient memories of humankind when, in fact, we did have first uh, blood sacrifice of people, then moving on to blood sacrifice of animals, as in the Old Testament, lambs, for instance maybe goats, and then moving on to something, sharing of the bread and wine and so forth. So, that's unusual ego concepts number one. And in a separate video, since this one has turned out to be so long, I'll discuss the second idea about unusual concepts of ego.